In the rivers of the United States, there's an animal said to come from hell itself. But actually, this giant salamander is more closely linked to the dinosaurs than to fire and brimstone. To find the origin of the hellbender, we need to travel all the way back to the Middle Jurassic and to the volcanic deposits of what is now northern China. Whilst this being the origin of the hellbender is widely disputed with it being defended and challenged multiple times, this is where we currently believe hellbenders have evolved from. But if the fossils are to be believed, it shows that the diversification of salamanders was already in progress during the Jurassic period. Since this time, the morphology of the Cryptobranchidae family has changed very little, and many scientists regard them as living fossils who remained unchanged for over 160 million years. Their voyage to North America was believed to take place across the land bridge, and adaptive radiation caused them to spread throughout the Americas from north to south. Adaptive radiation is a term used to describe when organisms differentiate rapidly from ancestral species into a variety of forms. This occurs especially when there is a shift in the environment, which makes untapped resources available. Cryptobranchidae is a family that contains only species of giant salamander, of which there are three species, and the hellbender is the smallest of the group, weighing up to 2.2 kilograms and measuring between 30 and 74 centimetres long. The hellbender can also be split into two subspecies. There is a typical subspecies, which is the specimen most people would think of when thinking of the hellbender. However, there is also another subspecies called the Ozark Hellbender. This subspecies can only be found in the Black River system of Arkansas and Missouri, and the population is distinctly split between the western and eastern populations. The subspecies is smaller than a typical hellbender, and the spots that usually cover the hellbender's body appear as blotches in the subspecies. The Ozark Hellbender is actually quite well studied, as recent declines have made this a necessity to save it from extinction. It is believed the name Hellbender hails from the animal's unusual appearance. It may have been the first settlers discovered this creature and believed it to come from hell, or perhaps the hellbender's skin reminded its discoveries of the horrible tortures that may await them in hell. However, the hellbender is not always known by such a ghastly name, and sometimes may be referred to as mud dogs, snot otters, the Allegheny alligator, or even the Leverian water newt. Scientifically, the hellbender is referred to as Cryptobranchidus alleghaniensis, it is believed that the genus Cryptobranchidus is derived from ancient Greek and translates roughly to hidden girl. The hellbender's flat, brownish grey body is entirely covered in mucus. This mucus offers many uses, including protecting them from parasites and abrasion. It also serves the purpose of protecting them from predators, as the mucus gives the animal a disgusting taste. Their flat body offers little resistance to the fast-flowing waters of their favoured rivers and allows them to make their way upstream and crawl into narrow spaces easily. Their hardened toe tips and all of their 18 toes also allow them to move around the river effortlessly, as they provide extra grip on the rocks of the riverbed. Although they do have lungs, hellbenders do not rely on them for oxygen intake. Gill slits in the hellbender's larval stage will persist into adulthood, but these two are not the main way the hellbender gets oxygen. Instead, the hellbender will rely on oxygen being absorbed through the skin by a network of capillaries in the skin folds. These folds increase the surface area for respiration, and allows a lot of oxygen to be absorbed through the skin and into the blood from the river water. Hellbenders have relatively poor eyesight, but excellent vision is not a requirement for an animal that lives on the riverbed. Instead, the hellbenders have light-sensitive cells all over their bodies, and those on the tail are extra sensitive to prevent them from leaving it sticking out from under a rock and giving their position away to predators. A sense that is well developed in hellbenders, however, is their sense of smell. Hellbenders will move upstream in search of food such as dead fish, following the trail of scent molecules. Another hunting mechanism the hellbender uses is a lateral line. This is a trait they share with fish species, and the line allows them to detect vibrations in the water. The range of the hellbender spreads from southern New York all the way to northern Alabama, and all the way west to the Missouri border with Illinois, there is then a gap in the hellbender's range before reaching the Ozark subspecies population, which can be found in the rivers of Missouri and Arkansas. Hellbenders can be found in larger, fast-flowing river systems with water that is well oxygenated and unpolluted. They prefer cooler temperatures, avoiding water that reaches above 20 degrees Celsius. These rivers must also have large flat rocks, logs or boards which can be used as shelter and for nesting sites. Hellbenders are solitary animals, spending their days hidden under stones on the riverbed. They will defend their shelter rocks from other hellbenders, but they are not overly aggressive towards each other unless it's in the breeding season. If you're enjoying this episode so far, remember to like and subscribe as it really helps small creators like me out.
generally, late summer is the time that adult hellbenders turn to making more hellbenders. During the breeding season is the only time which hellbenders may gather together, with ten or more individuals coming together in the same place. A male will use one of two methods to attract females to his nest site, which is basically just an indent he's dug out of the river substrate. The first option is to attract her, making the nest look as appealing as possible. The second is to just round her up and push her towards the nest to encourage her to lay her eggs. If the male's attempts to encourage her to lay her eggs are successful, she will lay a string of 150 to 900 eggs on the riverbed, which are then fertilised externally by the male. Now it is the male's turn. He will spend the next 12 weeks guarding the eggs until they hatch, and when they do, they will only measure 3 centimetres in length. When night falls, the hellbender will emerge from their hiding place to find food. Looking at the hellbender, you might not expect it to be an adept predator. However, that is exactly what it is. A deadly predator who you wouldn't want to mess with. That is, of course, if you are a crayfish or maybe a worm. To hunt its prey, the hellbender would conceal themselves between rocks on the stream bed, with only their head protruding from underneath the rock, and suddenly ambush its prey as it swims past. As infants, hellbenders have external gills which resemble small trees going out the side of their head, and until metamorphosis they may be confused with mud puppies. Mud puppies are also a species of salamander that can be found in North America, but they retain their external gills all the way into adulthood. At around 18 months, the hellbenders will undergo metamorphosis, and at this point they are only 13.5 cm long. After metamorphosis, the salamanders will begin to spend time away from the water. It won't be until the hellbender is 5 years of age that it will become mature, and some individuals don't mature until they are 7. If the hellbender survives all the threats of life, they can look forward to a life spanning 25 years in the wild, and up to 30 years in human care. Like many other species currently on Earth, the main threats to the hellbender's survival are habitat loss and habitat degradation, but for the hellbender it doesn't end there. They are purposefully hunted and are collected for the pet trade, and sometimes they are even accidental victims of pleasure anglers. This has led to them being classified as near-threatened in the wild by the IOCN. Recently, the population has declined rapidly, but this isn't the first time we have seen declines in the hellbenders' populations. In 1981, the species was listed as already extinct or endangered in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa and Maryland. They were known to have decreasing populations in Arkansas and Kentucky and were recognised as being threatened throughout their range. Since then, a variety of threats include destruction of habitats, pollution, disease and collection for commercial and scientific purposes have caused irreversible damage to the population. Since October 5, 2011, the Ozark subspecies has been classified as endangered by the US Fish and Wildlife Service under the Endangered Species Act, as its population has seen a decline of 75% since the 1980s. This means that only around 590 individuals remain in the wild. The main factors of this decline are degraded water quality, habitat loss, ore and gravel mining, sedimentation and collection for the pet trade. More natural threats to adult hellbenders include raccoons, minks and otters. Juveniles can be expected to be hunted by many species, including fish, turtles, snakes and other hellbenders. However, there is good news. Reintroductions have been proposed for areas where the hellbenders once lived, the Ozark subspecies has successfully bred in captivity, with the first hatchings taking place on November 15, 2011, the result of a joint project between the St. Louis Zoo and Missouri Department of Conservation. Thanks for watching this species profile. Next time we'll be looking at one of the most popular animals at this point in time, the red panda. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe as it really helps smaller creators like me out. And click that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when the next episode is uploaded.